Hey guys, do you remember about a week ago in September, Aria, or whatever they say, do you remember last episode when we put the back on the Bajo Quinto, and I think it turned out, <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Why on earth, do I keep telling you, we're going to put the back on the Bajo Quinto. Quinto. Well, because I really intend to, but there are some other things that we need to take care of. And one of them is the frets on the neck. They look like the Baja 1000 trail because there were eight strings, ten. Yeah, okay. I, you know what, this is the twelfth episode you think I would know by now. Anyway, there are some things on here that need to be fixed and one of them is the frets are rutted out to the point where they need to be replaced. And there is a very delicate area. By the way, I'm gonna show you some of the coolest tools you have ever seen. If you're still beating frets in with one of those hammers that we all start with that you buy from uh, that tool store that has all the tools that we could ever imagine we wanted but never really needed, yeah. So, but all those tools, as you're gonna see in this episode, it gets to this point where the neck is, you still are gonna have to use a hammer. And I'll tell you what, if you start hammering away and you can't get this supported, you're gonna weaken this part. And that's why this isn't on here. While you are here, I want you to see these strings I put on here loosely. Do you see them? And I'm gonna pull this a little bit, and you can tell, you see those strings moving? Part of getting the neck on here in relation to the back is to make sure that that's right. So, anyway, there's a lot going on here. I'm really happy with the way all the binding and everything turned out. I actually have people who build these looking at my post and not completely um, criticizing me. Maybe you're all just polite. Gracias. So, let's get to a bench or two, and I'm going to show you how to put frets on this thing, or change them out. Okay, let's do a little explaining here about why we still have the back off, and we're talking about doing a refret job. And here is the big problem. If we look here, this is moving around still and of course we're going to have to bow the back and and the body into itself to make sure that the neck angle is straight so while we're here the problem we have is there's frets right here and so if we go beating on everything something is going to be uh, likely to be strained here so if we do this part of the fretboard here while we can still get our hand underneath it or a block of some type this is going to be much better in the end also i'm going to show you something very unorthodox you've seen me drop guitars and mess the scene up by not being prepared but no right up there right about now is an episode about coffee can guitars and check this out electronics there are actually two pickups in this thing there is a piezo up here and there is a coil right there and it's embedded in the neck believe that or not so we're going to try this technique right here by removing a fret and then we're going to remove a section of the fingerboard and i know curious want to do that but I think I want to end up having this tab mount right over here like so so that means I am going to have to notch out the fingerboard right there and right there and then refret what's left so 
Let's start pulling frets. Okay, the first thing I want to do is realize that when I start pulling up frets, this fingerboard is all old and likely to chip and the tangs, we don't know what kind of frets these are, whatever. So we're going to take this and carefully run at an angle right next to the old fret and we are going to score right alongside of the fret is that way when things start coming up it's going to resist the chip out that inevitably happens now why are we doing this fret job well there are strings uh, double grooves and all of these frets and it was really played and it's not that much to look at but that right there tells you that someone was strumming it and they played it for a really long time. Yeah, this next stand is a good thing, but don't get so crazy pushing down that you are going to break the neck off of the instrument. So I know that this is a pain for you to watch, but I don't want to pick up and start doing this over and over. So the quicker I get, the better. Always come at an angle, because if you're not, you're gonna skip and jump and put a big mark in the fingerboard like I just did. If you were working on a Gibson or a Martin or something like that, you did that well. It would be terrible, but since I own this guitar, I actually like that and I will treasure that and I will be able to identify guitar by that. Now a couple things I want to show you. Do not cheap out on some tools. Get good fret cutting pliers, nippers, and get fret pullers. Now pulling frets is not something you grab onto them and just yank on them. This bevel will actually pull the fret up for you by squeezing. As you squeeze it causes this to put downward pressure and force this up. Now, when you get up a little bit, go all the way across, and then if you need additional leverage, they make these things that once that a little bit of that tang is exposed, you can put this down and get yourself another 20 thousandths or, I don't know, you know I like the metric system, but oh well, so we're just going to start here we're going to want to get over our work and we're just going to walk down very carefully and squeeze. We are not pulling. Pulling is going to give us chip out. We do not want that because chipping out the fingerboard is going to make your new fretting job terrible. Okay, the best thing is always to stay over your work. See, this is coming up a little bit now, which gives me the ability to put this on here and then walk down. And it's going to give me a little bit more leverage the further I go down. Is really not that much chip out so what I'm going to want to do is I am going to take a little bit of sandpaper lightly notice that fret only went into there and this one to here so that's kind of an ornamental thing I don't know that people are fret fretting the big heavy bass string over here but we are going to knock this down a little bit because if there is a little bit of chip out there what's going to happen is when you hit it, sanding it, you're going to rip something off. Trust me. A couple little tools you want to know about. This one. Um, I can go in and pull this out and clean that fret channel. And I can also take this, which is a, like a fret saw, and I can just kind of pull that through once or twice and everything will be okay. Now I'm going to pull these off remembering that 
I am going to mount the pickup over here somewhere in this area. I want to make sure that I've got a place to mount this. Since this is going to be a right-handed guitar, I want the wiring to follow through here. Come on, chicks, like teal pointer. Do your job. I know it's late. Quit your whining. Okay, let's do one more together. Remember, these are short over here. Always get over your work. Now, in the event that you run into some trouble getting frets out because they might have been glued in or whatever, they have gadgets like this that you can put on Granny's iron and you just simply heat up your frets a little bit before you start this process and sometimes that'll work better for you. Okay, this is the part where the purists are going to freak out. I am going to cut a section of the fingerboard out because the fingerboard is as thick as this pickup. So, I am going to use this fret line because I know it's straight to line that up, the side of the pickup there. And then I'm just going to take my, that's right, election pencil and go along numerous times to get that line. And then, are you ready for this? We might use this puppy or we might just decide to use Kung Fu Theater Ginsu Knife. Pick one. Let me guess, you're wanting me to rethink this. Well, guess what? Def Leopard, baby. Too late. we have taken off most of the frets. I got a little Instagram deal to do, but remember, we were gonna decide how to amp this thing up, to use a sound hole pickup or a piezo or something. I don't know about the piezo. I might do that, just mount one on the inside just for that. But what I decided to do, I showed you, this is a fret warmer that you can put on granny's iron which i brought in here you can't be without granny's iron and you just heat this up it's a passive heat source and then you sit it here or you can use this contraption which is a silicone heating pad and you can get this i swear i'm going to do an uh, a, an amazon affiliate link so you guys can get all the cool stuff i have in one spot and then you can give me money and then I'll call it the IRS junk pile guitar something or other, and they'll probably get upset and audit me. But anyway, what I did, what I've done, is I have cut this down using this as a fret and the width of this here. I'm bouncing around here because, well, I like bouncy things, but I use this. Kung Fu Theater Ginsu giant knife here to cut these down. And now I'm heating this up to break the glue loose underneath this section. And so I have to sit this. It's not too hot yet. You didn't hear Chick Flick Teal Pointer screaming, but that's what I'm up to. Once that's heated up sufficiently, take the palette knife. I've already scraped this off. The benefit of using this instead of granny's iron is if this is not hot you won't burn or mar this simply beautiful finish this is one of the most beautiful things i've ever seen and not really but we won't get into that now will we okay let's check and see how hot this is ah! oh only first degree burn let's let it go for just a little bit more okay let's get this out of the way first off i forgot to tell you i must have forgot that this thing has a dial on it actually it's a real stat did you know that neither did i anyway we're going to take this off 
and we're gonna put this over here. This is very hot. It's hotter than the last time I BS'd you for 45 seconds unnecessarily and incessantly. Ah, there we go, second degree blister. You saw it here first. Anyway, now I've got this palette knife. This glue is heated up. This is not hot, this is a little bit here. But now I put this in here like this and look, it's going all the way in regular and um, let's come over here there we go we're about halfway through right there it's going to need a little bit more and turn on the what was that word rheostat yes welcome to third grade be back with you in a few minutes all right third time is this charm i've got this sheffield stainless steel knife that is as good or better as any palette knife there you go very old not as old as most of you but old nonetheless so oh by the way check out this jorgensen clamp Remind me not to tell you the story behind that one. Okay, here we go. Oh, look at that. It popped right off. Oh, we're gonna have to get that off there and glue it back on. But let's do the moment of truth. Does this sit down below the fretboard? Well, it will when I sand this a little bit, but yeah, look at that. It's just a tad below the fretboard. You see this? And the frets will be up here. This is going to be beautiful. Like everything that's associated to me. Yeah, that's pointing to me, not you. Anyway, as you are, it's fine. Don't cover it. Okay, so what we really need to do now is we want to get this nice and flat and make sure there's no glue or pieces of stuff that's going to give us a problem later so we're going to take a chisel and come at it this way like so okay and get these high points out now i've got this one holding that end of that fingerboard i want to keep that because it's Nice and decorative, okay, like so. But we're gonna get this all down to the top of the soundboard. Now notice that I'm going to turn this upside down because there's a wire here that needs to be drilled down through here and I'm thinking that there is plenty of room here to attach this tab. So there'll be two screws going, or three, going down into this area. We just got to find out what's behind it because I know there's a brace going through there. Little trick guys, if you're using sandpaper and you put it on a block, you're going to take a lot more off and you're going to level sand a lot easier than if you just put it on your finger or something like that, okay? We just need to make sure that this whole thing is level because if it's not, the pickup will not sit level. So let's have a look here. Yeah, there we go. Okay guys, a couple little tricks here before I move back into the fretboard and refretting this thing. Um, I really don't want to put any more holes into uh, the soundboard than I need to. Um, I did have to put a hole in for the wire for this pickup, okay? These are typically pickups that uh, mount to a pit guard. They also have 
ones that come and wrap around the side of the fingerboard but th this fingerboard is pretty wide so this works good you see that now in the event I want to restore this I've got uh, the piece of wood uh, saved that I use because we never throw away wood I could glue this back in here and it's got a fret slot right there um, but at the end of the day, what I don't want to do is start drilling a lot of different holes in here because there's some bracing and stuff. So I took a piece of plywood. That, see, there's plies. And I figured out how much room there is between here and the bottom here. And when I lay this in here, I want to make sure that this is nice and flat it can't be sticking up above so that all worked out good everything lines up because there's a lot of strings that have to go over this thing to make it work then I took a couple pieces of plywood that fit like so under here and I don't want it to be too high but I can take a piece of one of these like so and put it underneath here and I can glue this with hide glue to the top of the soundboard now the hide glue if I have to remove this is easy I just heat it up with that contraption you saw the other day or that I used a minute ago which was the other day by the way now you know but I'm going to put this grain the opposite of the way this is running so it kind of acts as a cleat but when I lay this over like so you can tell when that's glued to the top then I will be able to use a couple of different screws or whatever I want um, to attach to the piece of plywood that's under here and not the top of this wonderful spotless exquisitely finished guitar now that we've got these frets off of here what we want to do is take something that we know is flat we want to put a worn fine grade of sandpaper and since this fretboard is flat we can just do this we don't want to take a short piece and just be going here and here and here you want to basically be able to go over the whole fretboard like this whatever you need to do and you can get a lot of this stuff you don't want to take a bunch off but when you start seeing things and patterns showing up here wherever the sawdust is that will kind of tell you where your high points and low points and all that thing kind of thing are if you don't address at least a little bit of that up front, what ends up happening is you're fretting and, and leveling and getting everything just right and the playability of the guitar goes south real quick. Ideally, we would want a little bit of uh, sawdust coming off on every part of the fretboard right here and that would make me feel a lot better I'm gonna go ahead and pull the bridge off of this thing it's just temporarily mounted on there so I can get this thing rolling and we'll get this last fret off of here and go to town on this so I, so I think we're getting pretty close here because if we put a straight edge on here, it's all good. Those few minutes that you put your attention to will pay off in the end. Now, of course, we're going to take our little fret scraping tool and run down through these and make sure everything's good because we're going to start pounding some frets. And I think... We're going to learn a little something here because I got some old tools and new tools. And you know what? When you're doing a guitar like this, one of them by itself never does the job. That's the joke about fretting. Okay, 
let's talk a little bit about getting frets in. Now, the old way is, there's a couple of tools you're, all, you're always gonna need, and one of them is a fret wire cutter. Don't skimp on this. You've gotta be able to do something that will clip the ends for you. There's some other stuff, but basically I cut this at an angle like this, boom, and then I simply put this in here like so, and I like to slide it up to the end. And then I can take a hammer of some type and smack my finger, but I could just tap that in there like that. And then I just come to the end. This is where this is very handy because it gets very close and I can just cut it like that, catch the wire, and then simply come along and give it some pass. Okay, that's kind of it. Then there's some filing and crowning and, and, and a million things to do, but that's kind of it. And that's how some of us do it. Now, this gadget here is called a, a fret press. And I showed you how to make one of these in an episode right up there, right about now. The principle is pretty simple. It's an arbor press. You can adjust all kinds of things. It's got a call, what's called a call down here, that holds some of these that match your radius. And you take a very tiny Allen wrench that you'll lose every time and put these in here. Now, these are easier to use when the neck is not on the guitar or you put your fingerboard on and get it fretted and get it done. And then this is simply put the fingerboard in here, adjust everything where it needs to be, and then you just simply put this down. And the call, again, based on the radius of your neck, this one has no radius, but you can see there's a groove in there that seats the fret and pushes it in mechanically. Now, good news about this is you can prop this up, you can line up everything. I could actually get this, by the way, it's heavy. I could set it on some blocks and do whatever I need to do. But when it gets down into this area or up by the headstock, sometimes that's a problem. Okay, let's try something that's kind of a little bit different. You're still going to need your good fret wire. And remember, since we cut the last one off at an angle, that angle is going to be there on the next one. I'm still going to want to slide it in a little bit like this. This is where making sure that you didn't mess everything up and took your time. I want to get the next stand underneath there. You want to get everything in order because it never fails the first time you hit this with your hammer. It's not going to go in unless, well, I'm lucky today. Now I'm going to take this, go to here, and do that. Wow, it stayed in there. Anybody that's done this knows how rare that is now. Watch this. This is like the Arbor Press, yeah, except it has padded cradles. There are several of these that match the profile of your neck. This is not a cheap gadget. And if you're doing a lot of fret work, um, it would justify it. If you got something, you could use this for a Dobro, it's flat. But you've got all these different things in their pad and they pin in and pin out really easily. And then you have a number of calls that match the radius of guitars. So same thing as the Arbor Press. And wow, I found that little Allen wrench for the second time in a row in one day. That's rare. But what this does is once you get that tapped in carefully, Put that out there like that. You get under the neck. And this works like a vice grips. You line this up carefully. And then you just 
press down. Boom. And it drops right in. Then it's just as easy as grasping a little bit, clicking the release, and there you go. You can adjust how difficult or wide you can move this. This adapts to just about any instrument. And the nice thing about this is you don't need to set up anything. You can just come in and again, if you need to adjust how it is, you can feel that and just, and it will clamp and press those frets down in there. Um, like I said, this is a major investment, but if you're doing a lot of fret work, this is the one. Look at that. I can take my gauge and go along there and nothing fits. It's perfect. We're going to get the rest of this done now. Okay, this is where all the machines fail because we're in the area now where the neck and everything is. And I'll tell you what, if you have an old arch top like this one here with the neck about ready to come off because it has a screw in it already. Yeah, there you go. And you start beating away on this kind of stuff. I'll tell you what, if you've got the back of this thing off already, it's just really easy to take a block and just put it in here and get where everything is supported and then you don't have to worry about it. You just reach in there and say, okay, is that in place where it's snug when I start tapping right in there? And sure enough it is. So we'll finish this out now. Now we want to remember that this one here was set back a little bit, remember that? So we want to retain that character while we're beating our fingers off here. Okay guys, I'm gonna be a real bastard. You know, that's what it says right there. Blow it up, you see it? and kind of just leave you hanging here. But I don't think that I can do uh, justice to the, what, to the what's and ifs and how's and when's of the way fret dressing goes. So I'm not gonna do that now, but I'm gonna give you a, a look at some of the tools that we use in some basic stuff here. Now, when we use our fret nipping pliers, and we get these ends where they need to be, that's good. But if it's coming into winter and you're going down your fret board on any guitar and you feel these sticking out, that's because the wood is shrinking. Wood shrinks, it expands and that kind of thing. So there is nothing better in my world of junky guitars than to take a big bastard file and just run down these until you can't feel them sticking out anymore and then you begin the arduous process of coming in and counting strokes so if you're going to do five on each one do five on each and every one but don't kid yourself i use a bastard file if the guitar is separate the body is separate from the neck don't be surprised if you see me taking a guitar that i've made out of a cigar box or a coffee can uh, guitar license plate neck and just putting it up to the belt sander and rolling it to get the initial dressing done but you might run across tools that you need like a magic marker so you're going to go across the top of each fret and then you can make sure that when you go down each one you are going to you're going to take some of this off with whatever you're doing and if some of it is still on in this area but off here it tells you um, that something's not right level wise uh, you can take a long piece of uh, straight edge that's got some self-adhesive 
um, sandpaper on it and you can just work the neck that way and get everything basically where you need it. You're always going to need some kind of straight edge to see if there's something sticking up. You can tell when you put a string on if everything's buzzing check the height of your nut because if everything's hitting the first fret nothing is going to be right. What else do we got here? Um, we've got fret rockers which are pretty cool. The long, uh, shorter, medium sized edges. Though Those go across um, fret runs to make sure that nothing is rocking back and forth. So when you get down into the end down here, you want to use one of these edges. And then a little bit more expensive one is called a fret kisser. It's the same thing except there's diamond particles embedded here so if you do find one that's rocking you simply put the diamond uh, dot, dust or bits on that one and then you can go back and forth until it quits rocking this is a handy tool uh, they make any number of stones and again you have protectors that you put a rubber band on if you're working this fret you can just come along like so they have awesome fret files that are small and the cool thing about these is there's nothing on the side if you have a small um, file that's shaped like this and you don't want to spend the extra money to buy this you can take the side teeth of any file on a belt sander but this one is for coming in like this and doing some final work we also have these awesome files that you can use on a guitar that's having a problem and you have still have the strings on but again this is diamond embedded so you just um, do this kind of stuff there's files that already have the crown here so you just go like so and again if you mark all of these up with a magic marker you can tell how you're doing so there's this is its own thing so we will end it there the main thing that we learned here is that we got the frets back in we didn't break up the fingerboard to do it and now it's just time for f some fine dressing there are a million videos out there all kinds of different qualities to people who make who fill stadiums, I'm not going to be doing their fret work. So let's close this out. All right, the dreaded flyby. The frets are there, except for right here. Now, I think it's time that we can finally put the back on. No, we're not going to do that yet. I'm not going to lead you on and tell you that that's what's going to happen because we have one more step to do in the next episode before we put the back on and that is we are going to wire this thing up for sound and with all this bracing and all this we need to know where to put the components we need to figure out how to ground the strings that's going to be a big mystery um, and anyway let's end this episode now um don't get freaked out about the back but it's time in the next episode to wire this thing up and let's finally hear what it's going to sound like because it's certainly sonically concrete now that i put all this in there hey thanks for watching give me a like and subscribe if you have not see you soon